18 by 24 inch canvas up here or whatever size you want to use. We just use this because it's good for the television format. It's covered with a thin even coat of liquid white and it's all ready to go. So let's just have a fun, fun time today. And I get so many cards and letters from people saying, do a winter scene that's cold. Uh, your warm scenes are nice, but where I live it's cold and we want a cold scene. I'm going to show you a very easy way using a very limited palette how to do one of the neatest little winter scenes and you can change it to fit whatever area that you live in, okay? So we have nothing but black, blue, and white today. So that's what we'll use. Let's start out with a little midnight black, Prussian blue. We just mix them on the brush here. Just mix them on the brush, black and blue, or blue and black, whichever we prefer. All right, let's go right up to the top here. Now we'll just start up here making our little X's, our little crisscross strokes, whatever you want to call them. There we are. Now, if you want it to look colder, you can add more of the black color and make it look more overcast and like it's really, really a bad, bad stormy day. Or if you want it to look a little brighter, go to the blue side. Totally and completely up to you. There. Years ago, I had a man tell me he couldn't paint because he was colorblind and could see nothing but gray. Well, even if you're colorblind, when you're using only black, blue, and white, you can do a very, very nice painting because all you're working with is values or different hues of color, different intensities of color. And anybody can do it, even if they're colorblind. It's no big deal. All right. Now, by starting at the top and working down, your paint is continually mixing with a liquid white that's on the canvas, and automatically, automatically, it gets lighter and lighter toward the horizon. And in a landscape, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Now we'll just go all the way across, take out the little brush strokes, and, and we're in business. All right. Maybe we'll have a little water in this. You know me. I, I'm crazy about water, so we'll take, <laughs> since it's all we have, we'll take the same colors, just black and blue, and let's lay in a little water. This is going to be a winter scene. Then we we'll, probably will have some snow down here. And this also would work very well as a shadow color for the snow. So we don't care. We'll cover the whole bottom. And whatever we don't want to be water, it'll be snow. All right, other side. But notice we start on the outside edge and pull inward. That way you don't end up with big, watch here, I'll just do it. You start here and go over, see the big line? That's very hard to blend out. Very hard to blend out. And it's still showing a little bit. You have to really work to blend that out. So start from the outside and pull in. And try to leave a little area open like in there. That little open area, if all works right, will look like a little sheen of light coming across your water. All right. Good. Very lightly. Just blend the entire bottom. And that little light area remains in there. Okay, let's wash the old brush. Today, let's play a little bit with clouds, maybe. Shake off the excess <laughs> and beat the devil out of it. I'll tell you what, let me grab old fan brush here. Even using just blue and white and black, we can make some very effective little clouds. Watch here, we'll take, we'll start with just plain titanium white. Load both sides of a good fan brush. There. Now these are bristle fan brushes. They're, they're pretty stiff in comparison to ones that are made of oh, badger hair or some of the better ones. These are pretty stiff brushes. You wouldn't want to use a sable brush to do this because we, we're going to really push this paint into the canvas. Now decide where your little cloud's going to live. In our world, maybe. Yep, right there. Right there. Just work in tight, tight little circles. Little tiny circles. There you go. See? The tiny little circles. Maybe maybe old cloud comes right over in here. And try not to stay in one spot and just work it over and over and over. Because it'll look like, hmm, look like a big old cotton ball up in the sky. And we don't want that. Don't want that. We want clouds that have character. Okay all kinds of little things happening there. Now, let me get a 
be sure it's good and dry. Two inch brush. Let's go in here and begin blending this. But we're not touching the top at all. And all I'm using is the very top of the brush. See there? Just the top bristles. Okay, there, good. And we'll just blend that right on back. Right on back. Now, very lightly, very lightly, we'll just sort of fluff that a little. Just fluff it up. And just two hairs and some air go over it a little bit. Look at that little cloud. And we can put layers of clouds in our world. But do one layer at a time and then come forward, always coming forward. Maybe, maybe there's another little layer right there. I don't know. Just wherever you want them. The clouds are very free. They just sort of float around the sky and have a good time all day. There. But see, layer after layer. And you could put as many layers as you want many as you want. Okay, all kinds of little things. And we just sort of let it float off in here into nothing. Back to our large brush. Be sure it's dry. Be sure it's dry. If it's wet and you do this, then you're going to lose the ability to blend it. Because the only reason you can blend this is it's a very thick, dry paint. If you have a thin, soupy paint, oily paint, then you're in trouble. And I'm just beating it to knock off the excess paint. There. Now all paint has a little oil separation. Sometimes when you open the tube, there'll be a little oil separation and oil will come out. Don't worry about that. But if the paint is real oily and real thin, it will not work for this technique. Now. I'm going to grab another fan brush. I have several of them going here. Let's take, let's take, put some white over there, some black and blue, mostly black. Oh, I want it to be into the gray. There. Maybe even a little darker. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. Now, let's go up in here. And right in here, I'll tell you, let's do it up here. We'll start way up in here. Let's have another little cloud that just floats right in here. Let's see there. Let that little cloud just float right around. Maybe it comes down and... I don't know. Let your imagination take you wherever you want to go. Just follow it to follow it. There. See, now we can make layers, though, of clouds, just using, basically, gray and white. That's really the only thing that we're using here. Back to our brush, big brush, and we begin blending that. Just blend it back. I want to blend the, the bottom of the cloud back here to where it almost disappears, but we're not touching the top up here of the cloud at all yet. Not yet. And then we'll just fluff the entire cloud and very lightly blend in. But see how that pushes that whole range of clouds back. And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you can take, watch here, watch here, watch here. Maybe here's a little cloud that slipped down. There's a little opening right there. Maybe it, maybe it slipped right out of there. There it goes. There it goes. And we'll just let it float right on back. And maybe there's another one that lives right there. A little floater in the front. Front floater. And you can just have this spill over wherever you think it should. Back to our big brush. That's clean and dry. And we blend the base of it out again. Just blend it out. And over here, same, same. Fluff them. Lift them. And then we blend the entire sky together. But you can just keep on and on and on and make layer after layer after layer of just gorgeous clouds. It's very simple to do. Even if you've, if you've never painted a cloud before, this will work for you. It's the easiest, most effective way I've ever seen of making clouds. 
All right. Let's have some fun. Hmm. We'll use that old brush we had the, the gray color on. Maybe in our world, there lives, lives, lives a little mountain. We're just taking the black and the blue since that's all we have. Mostly black, though. I want it on to the dark side. Something like so. And let's come right up in here. Maybe in our world. Yep. See, we don't have maybe, maybe there's a little mountain there. It comes right down. Put all kinds of little bumps and stuff in him. Maybe it just fades right on over into nothing, basically, back here. See, the only thing we're worried about is a nice top edge. We could care less what's happening elsewhere. That's all we're looking for. There. See how you can just put in a basic mountain sheep with a little fan brush, grab our two inch brush, and all we're gonna do here is grab it and pull. Because the liquid whites on the canvas, we can literally move the color. This would be difficult to do on a dry canvas, but on a canvas that's wet, it's very simple. Very simple. It'll just move all over. There, see? Just pull it. This is also an extremely easy and effective way of making an indication of some nice little mountains that live back in your painting. And I decided I wanted these to look like they're sort of going away from us, so I made this side smaller than that side. That's the only reason. If you want it to look like it's a straight one, then make it basically the same all the way across. Up to you. We can use, uh, I'll use a small knife. Could use a big one or a small one. I'll take a little titanium white. And I think there's a little snow laying up here in these mountains, but I don't want a lot. I don't want a lot. So I'm just rubbing this a little. And as you go down, let the knife turn so it gets wider. See? Figure out where you think there be, it might be a little snow on these. And just play some games here. Don't kill all your dark areas. Those dark areas are going to end up being our shadows. There. Okay. Let it go. Wasn't that little bird son, one of the cutest little devils? I like little birds. All my life I've raise little birds. But when I was a kid, my mother would always get on to me if I went out and, and swiped a bird out of the nest to raise. So when I was coming home from school sometime, I would, I would literally risk life and limb to climb some great big tree and swipe a little bird. And then I'd take it home and I'd, I'd tell my mother, I said, this little bird, Ma, he, he fell out of a tree. I was out in the middle of the highway and and the cars were coming by and about to run over him, and I have to take care of him. And she'd say, well, okay, if that's the case. But I always, I always thought she really knew the truth. And every year, there'd be this little bird out in the highway, and I'd bring him home. And I'd raise him, go out every day after school and dig fishing worms for him, feed the little devils, because they, they take constant care. And then when he got big, I'd turn him loose, let him go. And then all year, every time I'd see a bird that was the same breed as the one I had released, I would, I'd wonder if that was my little bird that I'd raised and had the opportunity to make friends with. So I borrowed that little bird from Diana Schaefer, the bird lady here in Muncie. He's a loner bird, I guess. Diana raises hundreds of little birds that are orphaned or for various reasons have no parents. Every year she raises hundreds of them and turns them loose. And there's people all over the country that do this, that work with injured animals and birds and orphaned animals and birds, and they need your help. If you have time, go see them. Go see them. And it's a super way for my young friends to get to meet some creatures. I know I work with Ann Young in Orlando, Florida, where I live. And I go over and just help her feed the birds sometime. Because she, she has about 2,000 birds a year. And she always needs help. 
and so does so do all the other bird ladies. So if you have time, give them a hand. They'll appreciate it. They'll appreciate it. Hey, most of them support this out of their own pocket. They they can always use a little contribution. We'll use a oh, one inch brush here. And I'm just going to tap into some of that gray color, just a little. Maybe in our world back here, maybe there's just a few little trees that grow right up the side of this. Just touch, sort of lift upward a little. We're going to come back with another one and, and do this again. But this just begins giving the feeling of a little, little trees that are growing right up the side over there. Just a few. There. Okay. Now, we'll take a clean, dry one inch brush. This is a different brush. I have several of them. And lift upward. Just lift upward. But see, it'll make it look like there's little trees growing right up the side of these mountains back here. Yeah, there we are. Far, far away. Little tiny ones. Little tiny ones. And the last show, we showed the little kestrel. He's, he's almost like a little falcon. A beautiful little bird. Maybe we'll show him again in this series. So many people have wrote and asked about him and how he's doing. Gorgeous little bird. There we are. And just put layer after layer. You make up your mind where you, where you want these and how many you want. Because you can get sort of carried away with them. Take a little more of the titanium white. And right down here at the base, we can put in the indication a little snow down at the bottom of them. See, and that sort of brings it all together. There we go. But there's really not much paint. There's not much paint there. And not a great deal of pressure. You still want to break a little. I think I'll have some trees there, so I'm not too worried about that say. Looks like a natural place to have a nice little little tree thing growing out there. Okay, let me see. Let's take a fan brush. Here's one that had some white on it. That's all right. We'll go into that same color. Same color, blue, black, and white. But we don't want it, we don't want it real dark right now. We don't want it real dark. Because we're going to make several layers. Maybe back here lives some little evergreen trees that are far away. Or whatever kind of trees you want. Just touch and sort of pull downward. Get a little more color here. There. And just keep tapping with that. See, just keep it going like so. There we are. Okay. All kinds of little things. Okay, we'll just take this right on up, maybe to about there. Wherever we want. We want to create the illusion of mist at the base of these. So what we'll do is just tap with a two inch brush. Mist in a winter scene also helps make it look very cold. Very, very cold. Then lift upward. There. And at the base of that, we'll put a little bit more of the snow. Figure out where the bottom of these trees are. Lay a little snow. Just like that. See, you can put layer after layer after layer in your painting. And these various layers, that's what makes your painting look like it has depth. It's not just an old flat painting. Now, now we'll use the same color, since that's all we have, and just make it a little darker. But we still want to want to have room to get even darker if we need to. Maybe right in here we just push upward with a, with a brush. Maybe there's some little grassy things growing right there. And there's a few little trees. We're beginning to, to be able to make out a little, little bit of the shapes here and there because it's getting closer to us now. A little baby tree lives right there. But he'll grow up be a big old tree. There's one it already has. It's grown up pretty good. There, just push upward. Something like so. Maybe, maybe, in our world, we 
will have another one, bigger one right there. Okay, something goes like that. Just work back and forth. We start with a corner of the brush, and as we work down the tree, we just push harder and harder. Harder and harder. And automatically that'll happen. Let me grab another brush here. We'll take an old two-inch brush, a little titanium white on it. Grab the bottom of that blue and black color and give it a little pull. See how it creates an illusion of shadows under there. A little dark area underneath. But don't, don't be excited if you pick up a little 